Support Wrestle Talk. Press the thumbs up. Hello and welcome to the Wrestle Talk News. I'm Ollie Davis. After a horrible 2016 for TNA, where the company came scarily close to collapse multiple times, things are looking up under the promotion's new owners, Anthem Sports and Entertainment. TNA have now begun their week's worth of television tapings, and the show appears to be continuing the solid on screen product from the end of last year. Ex WWE star Hornswoggle appeared off the back of his total non stop deletion cameo, and Davey Richards made his return to save his American Wolves partner and TNA world champion Eddie Edwards in last night's show. But far more interesting was the people backstage. Pro Wrestling Sheet to reveal Jeff Jarrett has rejoined with TNA as an executive consultant, while Dutch Mantel, Zeb Coulter in WWE, will come back to the promotion as a creative consultant. I'm not exactly sure what being an executive consultant entails, but Jarrett has said it's a great opportunity for myself and GFW. No word yet on whether he's talking about his wrestling promotion or all that gold he's trying to sell. You know you're doing something right as a wrestling company though when WWE start trying to steal your top performers. Following WWE's announcement that they've signed former TNA star Mark Andrews to compete in their UK Championship tournament, the Wrestling Observer are reporting that WWE are very much interested in Matt and Jeff Hardy. Both their TNA contracts are expiring next month and neither have resigned under the new deals they've been offered. This is mainly because TNA want the Hardys to wrestle exclusively for them, but Matt and Jeff's broken Hardys gimmick earns them a lot of money on the independent scene. And as the Observer points out, WWE does want them and there's huge merchandising potential for them with the gimmick in WWE. If they were used regularly, they'd make a lot more there. The problem with Matt and Jeff going to WWE is that they'd have to sacrifice a lot of the creative freedom they've been given in TNA and the schedule will be much harder. The negotiations are in the early stages right now, but Matt is expected to use all of the above to his advantage, angling for more creative influence behind the scenes in TNA. WWE are also reported very interested in Kyle O'Reilly, the man who just lost the Ring of Honor title to Adam Cole at this week's Wrestle Kingdom 11 show. Dave Meltzer reports that right now ROH officials expect Kyle O'Reilly and Ray Rowe to leave for WWE and that just about everyone else is staying. The belief is Adam Cole will be WWE bound in May, but from a legal standpoint, he's not even allowed to negotiate with them until the 1st of May. Jay Lethal, Bobby Fish, Hangman Page and Christopher Daniels have all re-signed with ROH now, with Lethal's being a two-year deal and Fish rejecting one from WWE. Wrestle Kingdom 11 was notable for much more than just who and who isn't going to WWE though. It was main evented by what many are calling one of the greatest matches ever in professional wrestling. With Meltzer awarding Omega vs. Okada the hallowed six-star rating. To put that in perspective, Shawn Michaels vs. The Undertaker never got more than a 4.75. Go and watch it. Should the Hardy Boys go back to WWE? WWE and why. Make a valiant last stand against Meek Mahan in the comments below. For everyone wondering about the marriage proposal in yesterday's episode where I asked Kathy Wagner to marry John Canavan on his behalf, she said Yes! Despite 945 of you wanting a heel turn, the remaining 4,770 must be very happy. Congratulations, guys. Hopefully it all goes much better than most wrestling weddings. Just make sure you're 100% certain the vicar isn't Eric Bischoff before you exchange vows. If you want to hear that marriage proposal or learn more about Matt Hardy teasing a WWE return, click the videos to the left and subscribe. I've been Ollie Davis and that was wrestling.